the University of Miami. One of the most storied programs in the history of college football with some of the greatest legends of all time strapping it up for the U. But one of their teams stands out as the most talented in their history and possibly the most gifted of all time. The 2001 National Championship squad that went 12-0 on their way to winning it all. They were led by an insane number of legends and NFL Hall of Fame with the likes of Ed Reed on the back end and, and other amazing players roaming around their defense. Then Andre Johnson and Jeremy Shockey catching passes and being some of the most explosive players in the whole country. And then they had one of the most insane backfields ever assembled in the history of college football. Then they also had a freshman class of players that is hard to wrap your head around with, with players like Sean Taylor, Vince Wilfork, and Kellen Winslow Jr. Now I did make these freshmen more up to their stats they were as upperclassmen just because I really thought it would be cool to feature these really good younger players like Sean Taylor in this video. Now this amount of talent did not go unnoticed by the NFL with an insane 17 first round picks playing for this team and a total of 38 players on the squad being drafted into the NFL. So I put this Miami team back in NCAA college football 23 with the NCAA revamp mod and I have three goals I have to accomplish with the first going undefeated and winning the national title just like the 01 squad. Then number two, the 01 Canes had six first team All-Americans and we have to get more than that in our season. Then in the 01 season, the Canes 43.2 points per game and only allowed 9.4. So we have to beat those marks to accomplish our goal. We opened the season as the 16th ranked team in the nation and we are hosting unranked FAU. And on the first play of the game, we hand the rock off to Clinton Portis and he busts into the open and is gone for a 70 yard touchdown. And defensively, our big boys came to play with Sean Taylor coming down with a great fill in the run game. Then Jonathan Vilma steps in front for the INT. And then Ed Reed joins the party and grabs a pick of his own. And then offensively, Andre Johnson went completely off in this one. And it was a firework show. And we stroll through week one with 48 nothing victory. Then moving into week two, where we battle Florida. And if the U wants to jump back into national relevance, we need to roll in this one. In the game, we have a nice drive going where we find Andre Johnson over the middle. He breaks a tackle before diving into the end zone. Then the rest of the first half was a sloppy affair with turnovers going both ways and neither team being able to get much going until with about one minute left before the half, Dorsey runs a play action fake, pulling down the D before hitting Dre in stride for a huge deep bomb to go up 14 rip at half. Then in the second half, the U came out and started to put their stamp on this game with big deep shots down the field and Vilma firing through the line to blow up plays and the Gators really couldn't keep it going in this one with Miami dropping the hammer and putting the rest of the country on notice with a 28 to 6 win. Then going into week three against the division two FCS squad and in this one the Hurricanes were really able to flex their muscles completely dominating offensively and defensively on their way to a 64 nothing win and a 3-0 start to the season. Moving into game four after the great start to the year the U moves up to number eight in the polls and they were matched up versus an overmatched South Florida squad. And it was another dominating performance with the offense showing how explosive they could be with a ton of athletes all putting pressure on the defense. And then on the other side of the ball, they were absolutely mauling and terrorizing the offense, showing that this Miami team had a chance to go down as one of the most talented and balanced teams that college football has seen in years. And they blow the doors off South Florida 42 to seven. Then moving into game five and we are hosting Georgia Tech and this was another game where the talent level of this squad shone through and completely overpowered their opponent. Whether it was on the ground with Portis running wild or Andre Johnson and Jeremy Shockey showing that these bottom of the barrel ACC teams couldn't hang with the U and they shut out Tech 42 nothing. Then on to week six and the Hurricanes are shooting up the polls all the way to the number three spot and the rest of college football is starting to take notice. With incredible talent on both sides of the ball this group is starting to look like a squad on the brink of something special. And they're going on their road and had their first real test of the year with UNC in Chapel Hill. And to start this game, UNC is able to get the Canes into third down with Dorsey dropping back before he hits Andre Johnson over the middle and he turns on the Jets 
fires upfield and is gone for a 70-yard touchdown strike. Then on OU, UNC has a bit of a drive going until May feels the pressure and lobs it up and Graves steps under the ball and it is Hurricanes football going the other way. Then after that, Clinton Portis takes over, first punching it in right before the half to go up 14-0. Then after the half, the U comes out, hands it off to him and he explodes off the edge and is gone for another huge pickup on the ground to go up 21-3. And even though the Tar Heels kept this game close, it really didn't matter with Miami cruising to a 28-11 win and continuing their run of dominance. Then the U is playing their first ranked opponent this year with an underrated Wake Forest team coming to town and it was a tight game throughout the first half with Wake actually being up seven in the second quarter till Dorsey hits Roscoe to not this game at seven. Then right before the half Dorsey drops bat and hits a streaking shocky down the middle for a strike to go up seven at half. Then in the second half the Canes put their foot down and Dorsey finds Winslow who is wide open for a huge pickup down the field before hurtling to gain some extra yardage. Then he hits Dre in the back corner to make it 21-7. Then the defense puts the exclamation point on this game in the fourth quarter with first Vilma baiting the QB into a bad throw before jumping it and he is off to the races for seven. Then the next drive Hartman gets baited again and he throws it up to Graves and he is going the other way for another score. And with that the U closes this one out 42 to 14 and now it is clear the U is here to stay and who is going to be able to put a lid on this hurricane that is making its way through the college football world. So here we're just going to do a mid-season check-in on our goals and at this point of the year we are 7-0 and and have jumped all the way to the number three ranked team in the nation well on our path to the national final. Then we needed to get 10 All-Americans and having really good stats is going to be a big part of that. So here are where some of our best players sit through seven games. Then lastly we need to score more than 43 points per game and we are at 41.9 and we need to allow less than 9.4 and we are sitting at 6.5 through 7 games. But at this point in the season, the nation was clamoring to see a test for this undefeated but unproven Kane squad. And we were about to get our wish with the game of the year on the docket between the number three ranked team in the country, the Miami Hurricanes, and they were heading to Tallahassee to take on the number two team, the Florida State Seminoles. And this is not only a battle for the state of Florida, but who will be the main dog in the ACC and who will have the inside track to make the national final. Florida State is starting with the ball and they get to midfield before Vilma fires up the gut and they smash Travis in the backfield forcing a state punt. Then on offense Dorsey leads an amazing drive picking apart the Seminoles before delivering a strike to Shockey who falls into the end zone for the U to go up seven. Then the U gets a quick stop and Miami comes back out and Dorsey sees Shockey wide open over the middle and he fires it in for another TD. Then defensively the Canes really start to put on a show with a huge huge sack to push the Knolls back. Then Travis feels pressure, fires it into coverage, and the U is going the other way, and they are just too much for Florida State to handle so far. Then Dorsey is leading another amazing drive, just picking apart the secondary before he hits Shockey one more time for a score, and that is Shockey's third TD of the half. Then the second half really was all Canes, throwing the ball all over the yard with Dorsey having himself a day, and the defense coming up huge, and Portis was just running all over the place on the ground, and and the U comes to Tallahassee and rips the number two ranked Seminoles heart out with a dominating 44 to 14 road victory. And now there is no doubt that they have to be a title favorite at this point in the year. Then getting into the meat of the ACC schedule and the U played four overmatched opponents. Starting with a dominant win against Virginia Tech, their offense led by Dorsey Johnson and Shockey was too much to handle in the air while Portis made some big plays on the ground and the defense had a ton of pressures in at the QB and this led to a 35 to 14 win. Then the team traveled to Duke and played in the snow where they racked up seven touchdowns in just under 600 yards of offense in a shootout. The defense did allow 29 points, but they still made a ton of plays when it mattered and they took home the victory 49 to 29. Then against Virginia, Miami pulled away in the second half, airing the ball out and hitting massive strikes to Winslow and Andre Johnson deep down the field. And they wrapped this one up with a win 51 to 13. And then in the 
final game of the regular season. The Hurricanes face the 15th ranked team in the nation. And once again, their offense stole the show with huge pickups down the field, leading to an easy 49-28 win. This team looks like one of the deepest and most talented teams ever, but their success will ultimately depend on winning the national championship. Now, the journey to the Natty starts here for the Canes. They have to win the ACC and keep their unbeaten record in order to make the dance. And once again, they play their bitter rival, the Florida State Seminoles. And with only one loss on the year, this is where legends are made. Miami starts with the ball and Dorsey is picking apart the secondary, getting whatever he wants. And he leads a spectacular driver. He caps it off with a strike to Winslow to go up seven. Then on offense, Florida State comes out with a solid drive of their own with some great gain. Then a nice pickup through the air. But on third and six, Miami brings a blitz that fires in on Travis, who throws it up and the U is going the other way. And this is an amazing start to the game game for Miami. But after that, Dorsey rolls out of the pocket. He thinks he has a man open, throws it down the field, but the Knolls come down with it and get right back in this game. But then the Miami defense stands strong, gets it to third and long, and they break through into the backfield and pick up a huge sack. And then once again, Dorsey comes out and is just delivering lasers, putting the ball in perfect spot for these Miami pass catchers to make a ton of plays. Before they get into the red zone, he finds Andre Johnson for the touchdown to go up two scores late in the half. Put together a great drive, picking up some big gains on the ground before punching it in and cutting the lead to 14. Then the Knolls get the ball back after giving up a field goal, and Travis is able to stand tall in the pocket and fire it into his receiver who sprints down the sideline before getting pushed out inside the 10-yard line. But then the U wants to bring the dogs. They bring the heat, and Travis feels the pressure. He, he tries to drop it out into the flat, and Ed Reed makes the play, steps in front of it, and this is the play of the season. He is going the other way for a pick six to put the exclamation point on this game and close the door on the Seminoles. And this sends the Hurricanes one game away from the record book where they can finish this magical season and throw their name in the ring as possibly the greatest team we have ever seen. And the final in this one is 38 to 14 Miami and they are ACC champs. Now it all comes down to this. Miami vaults up to the number one seed in the country and they make the national final against the 11-2 Alabama Crimson Tide. Winning this game against the team that has dominated college football over the last decade would firmly place the U back at the top of the college football world. Bama is starting out with the ball to open up this game. Bryce Young drops back and finds a receiver over the middle, but Sean Taylor blows him up, setting the tone early for how physical this Miami team was going to be. But then Jameer Gibbs bursts through the line, breaks a tackle, and is out into the secondary and picks up a huge gain. And they continue to try to run the ball, but Ed Reed comes out and sticks Gibbs for another huge hit, and they hold Bama to a field goal. Then coming out on offense, and Miami goes for a screen pass, but it is totally covered, and it is picked off, and the tied are off to an unbelievable start to this game. But then the Canes defense holds strong, and then they get them to third down. Young has forever to throw. He's bound Bouncing in the pocket, he tries to chuck it to the back corner and Antrell Roll dives in front for this spectacular pick. What a play. And this brings the tide right back into this game. Then Dorsey drops back and delivers a few big strikes down the field to Jeremy Shockey. And they get over midfield, but they are held to a field goal and we are knotted at three. Then Bama comes back out on offense, but it's third down and the U gets a massive stop. Dorsey leads a picture perfect drive, sitting in the pocket and just finding his boys and spraying the ball everywhere before finally finding Andre Johnson in the end zone to go up seven. Then once again, Gibbs shows off his explosion and he bursts through the line and into the secondary and scampers for another massive gain. And this sets Bama up for another field goal before the half. Then Dorsey makes some incredible magic, marching down inside of Bama territory with some big throws. But then they get inside of the 10. He drops back, tries to buy some time and gets sacked with only 10 seconds left in the game but he hurries back to the line, gets everyone set up, and with two seconds left, he gets off the snap. He sees Shockey, and he hits him in the end zone with zeros on the board, and it is an 
absolutely incredible sequence to end the half and give the U a two score lead at halftime. But then to start the second half and Dorsey throws it up into coverage and the tide come down with it and they are right back in this game. And then the next play, Burton catches a slam, breaks a tackle and he is gone for Bama's first touchdown we have seen in this national final. And they are right back in this one. Then Dorsey has a bit of a drive going and then he gets aggressive and throws a post and the safety drives on it and picks off the ball and the Alabama faithful are going crazy. What a quick turn of events. But luckily the Miami defense comes up big and they hold them to three once again. Then the U gets around midfield and they need a play and they dial up a shot to their speedster Roscoe Parrish and he breaks in behind the secondary and he is gone for a huge score giving the U a massive touchdown late in the third quarter. But then Bama gets the ball back and they need to score. They pick up a huge run and get deep into Miami territory. They go for the end zone, but the ball pops out of their tight end's hands on third and 15 and they are forced to kick three. Then Miami puts on a really nice drive together with Portis on the ground making plays and Dorsey pushing the ball down the field. But then they get to third and short inside Miami territory and Dorsey goes to Shockey on the out route, but he is tackled short of the sticks and they are forced to kick another field goal to go up eight with two minutes left and it all comes down to this the national title on the line and Bryce Young comes up huge dropping back seeing a one-on-one -on -one and hitting Brooks for a huge play down the sideline then the very next play he, he attacks that same outside corner with Burton this time and the tide go down to the one yard line in two plays unbelievable then the very next play Young drops back throws a slant and hits it there it is touchdown Bama and they are down two they need this two-point conversion to tie it Bryce Young takes a snap drops back gets flushed from the pocket and throws another slant but he turfs it and Miami holds on Bama has one more shot in this one they line up for the onside kick and they need to recover it they boot it off but it bounces right to a Miami player they fall on the football and that is it that you can run out the clock they finish this off and Miami caps off their magical undefeated season with an absolute classic in the national title game and the Hurricanes will undoubtedly go down as one of the greatest collections of talents on both sides of the ball that we have ever seen play college football and with that the U is officially back. So to wrap this season up and looking at our goals, we were able to finish our season winning the Natty and being the number one ranked team in the nation and being undefeated just like the 0-1 Canes accomplishing this goal. Then our goal was to have over six first team All-Americans and we were able to blow this out of the water with having 10 first team All-Americans on our team, which is almost unbelievable. Then lastly, we needed to beat the Miami offensive points per game and allow less than the U defense did but we came up just short of these marks. So this Miami team is one of the greatest ever, but have you ever wondered what would happen if 12 of the most legendary college football quarterbacks ever were all in college at the same time playing in the same conference? Well, I just did a three-year sim of this exact scenario and to check out what happened, you need to check out this video right here.